Oh, hey, 209. Yeah. We actually got, actually got Midnight in chat. They uh they they heard it, but uh the person I was talking about, my buddy who co-founded was Erica, me sword fighter up in North Dakota, who by the way just got second place at the summit of the Dakotas, made a hell of a run. Well, this matchup is going to be interesting because both of them are heavily projectile banks. However, however, they do can capitalize a lot from their uh, close quarter interactions. So it's going to be very interesting to see how much uh, Hedgy is going to take advantage of the insane damage that his projectiles can deal, especially the versatility that they have in contrast with the reliability that Dark Samus's projectiles can bring to the table. It's going to be insane. This matchup is going to be really something else you don't want to miss it absolutely i mean we'll see how it all plays out but the problem here is that yeah hedgy's been playing pretty strong but like midnight is just got strong fundamentals can honestly i mean they've gotten this far doing random and whatever but like they can play a lot of characters at a very very high level so i mean hedgy's going to be having their hands full the entire way through bed but however we've seen how hedgy is so so dangerous by the ledge and he proves it once mm -hmm. again he might be able to recover here but he reverses the situation barely recovering there and the projectiles again doing their work not yet enough to take the stock but hey it's getting inches inches closer by now right 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 and uh, also another little fact here is that Midnight is actually the eighth seed, uh, the last qualifier for the Smash World Tour in the Southwest. So, I mean, that just kind of goes to show how strong of a player they are, uh, how much work they put in. But they are certainly struggling here a little bit, man. Hedgy's starting to find their rhythm, starting to find their pace, putting down a good little bit of damage, 67% extra credit so far. It continues just to be trouble for Midnight. That's another stock gone. Good guy. Oh my god get out of here yeah Jeez. yeah he's been confirming those left and right and i think it's even easier to confirm against samus however he finally gets the edge guard he was looking for for quite some time it might be a little too late however as you mentioned midnight gets no one to be uh to be uh basic basically needs that because he's just really really good overall his fundamentals are showing and just like that with these kinds of conversions he might be able to take the stock he wanted the spike but he was unable to get it However, Wait. the edge guard continues. There's no stopping and he finally gets it. Maybe not as flashy as you thought it would be, but very effective nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's just a great job in general. I mean, like, like you said, they were able to get the spike, but e being able to even up the game, take the stock, that's huge in itself. But oh no, you're getting caught up. You're taking 30% and it just keeps building up 40, 50%. It won't stop here, man. Uh, Midnight is definitely in a little bit of trouble. They got to find a way to turn this around. Oh, they almost lost the game right there. Barely going to be able to get out of that arc fire. Let's see what the option is from here. Yeah, he was trying to go at it again. We've seen it work before. Why wouldn't it work a third time? He's been very efficient with those. Barely avoiding that Thoron, missing its mark. But the percentage keeps piling up. Living Sword is ready. So we know that a confirm will come eventually. Maybe sooner rather than later. Than later. And the percentage being just at the perfect moment. Uh, Hedgy might be able to take the stock if he manages to connect the precise angle and precise timing that he needs to get the kill. Okay, they're definitely trying to go for ledge trap scenario. They're trying to see if Hedgy was going to be just jumping the gun, trying to get off the ledge. Oh, my God. He just oh, ran wait. off stage and nared him, spiking him off the stage. Call him Tim, Tim Duncan because he's using the backboard. It's insane. How... Uh, he was at such a disadvantage for the majority of the game, at least in my opinion. You might be able to argue something uh, against that, but I think Hedgy was very prominent throughout the whole the first game. And again, Boontai here, uh, Midnight doing a phenomenal job off stage, keeping the pressure at all points and catching him just at the right moment to get a stage bike to get the win with the clutch. It's insane. Dude. This this comes down to fundamentals, as you mentioned, and Midnight is showing how good they are. Yeah, no, they're definitely doing a fantastic job here, but we're going to see if Hedgy can find a way to answer back. They might be... Uh, you might be starting to see some of that that gas run out, man. It it's rough when you get this far in bracket. Oh, sometimes yeah. it's a lot of matches, but you know what? That's what it's all about. It's about that bracket stamina. And I mean, <laughs> Midnight has got that in spades. They know what it takes to go the distance. Uh, I mean, especially if you're able to get the the last chance qualifier that Smash World Tour. Because once you get double eliminated from the winner's side, you've got a whole lot of other matches in the second chance or the last chance qualifier. So like. 
they they know how to play a lot of games in a period of two days uh, so like let's just see if they're able to find a way to close this out see if they can get the you know push the advantage here get another w it's continue to make hedgy feel dead oh what? I don't, that was weird Here's the thing, Skiff. This is a canon matchup. If you haven't played a Fire Emblem Awakening, this, don't, uh, uh, spoilers alert, this is basically canon. Robin versus Scrum, the, the fated duo to fight at the end of the game. It's just a matter of whose blade is stronger. I would be inclined to mention or to point that uh, Robin's living sword might be a little better. However, Chrome is just a determined warrior. And just like that gets stuck number one in this Second game with a very uh, short lead. Let's see if he can keep it or if Hedgie is going to be able to take the stock back to back. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, yeah, definitely looking very strong. The down smash, not going to be able to take the stock. Did send the all oh, wait, got to follow up with the 11 sword aerial. Closed out that stock. Great stuff from Hedgie. But yeah, you can definitely tell that they're feeling like a little smothered here, man. It's like, because Krom, Krom's got some different like tools than Palutena, which is normally Midnight's main. But, like, there's a lot of very, you know, big similarities there. You know, like, setting up into a, a back air, trying to close out the stocks and stuff like that, getting that RAR action going on. But, yeah, man, it's just he's a lot faster, too. So it's going to be rough for Hedgy. I just want to see some chromicides because those are always hype, but these confirms keep happening. You need to stop him because he's just so good at getting these, but that dash attack is going to seal the deal. Beautiful there, beautiful display there from the Falcon, but that Levenser is still doing a lot of work, and it's def definitely taking stocks. If you're not careful enough, things are going to get even uglier if you let Chrome take advantage and transition with those bread and butters that he Gets. Oh, wow, man. Midnight with the beautiful DI. Going to be able to stay alive just a little bit longer. But getting it caught up in that Thoron. Dropping that, that stock. Last stock situation in this game, too, man. Hedgy's got to make some noise. I mean, you, you're not going to get too many other chances here. you got to find a way to close this out. Let's see what the option is. Oh, no. <laughs> going to get caught up in that dude, the jab. Not going to lose the stock, though. But, man, 73%. This is just getting rough. It's just a lot of pressure that Kronk can put out with his with his falcon with his sword. It's just so fast, so strong. It's really hard to uh, move around it. But Nosferatu doing God's work there. Not only getting more percentage, he also recovers a little bit of his own. So it's really, really good to get those, especially B reversed, which are so good to confirm into. Again, pressure keeps piling up, and the uh, aggression is non-stopping from both of them. Wow, uh, the spacing for both of them right now is actually. Pretty fantastic. <laughs> okay. Midnight was going for a little bit of crazy stuff right there. Not going to be able to close it out, but man, you are definitely a little bit disrespectful. Oh, God. The great DI, I think. I think the DI up just to get out of that situation. They could have potentially lost the stock. Midnight's got the pressure. He's making Hedgy feel a little bit nervous. Can he find a way to close out the stock, though? The back air going to be able to do it. The DI not going to be good enough, and we're seeing a game three, but 2-0 in Midnight's favor here. Yeah, it was clear that uh, Hedgy wasn't ready for that uh, back here, which let's be real, not nobody is. Krum can just move so fast. He can be mashing. He can be and, and be effective at it, which is the worst case because you you might be able to to predict some of his movements, but you're never fully ready. And if you are, well, that's props on you because it's really really difficult. Now midnight here looking very comfortable with a two win. Uh, lead in this set, so it's going to require, Hedgy is going to require to make some important changes. I don't really think like the stage counterpick is going to be so much uh, so important because, oh, well, hey, he changes from male to female. That has to account for something, right? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I know I know some people, they like to change up skins like when they're in a, a scenario like this, like down to It's a mentality shift. It yeah, works. sometimes. I don't know. It, it works for some people. I don't personally get it. But you know what? If it helps you out, by all means. By all means. But here we go. Smashville is going to be the stage here. And uh, we're going to see Midnight's Greninja trying to find a way to close this out. Uh, Hedgy's definitely feeling the pressure, though. Ooh, that's a big bit of damage. I can be able to convert into anything else. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's an interesting matchup. As I was, I, what I was trying to say earlier about the uh, the stage counterpick not being too important is because exactly Buntai Midnight here is going random. So how can you counter stage someone that you don't know who is going to get as a character? So this comes down to fundamentals and the fact that Greninja versus Robin can be so volatile because uh, yeah, Greninja oh. is really really lightweight, really weak 
to get stocks, it's still very easy to confirm things like these. And even the uh, the water jet from that LB can be devastating for a sortie such as Robin. Yeah, so Midnight could have closed out the stock, but they tried being a little, little disrespectful. They got that first Hydro Pump, <laughs> which set uh, Hedgy really up high. And instead of just going for a forward smash, which they would have absolutely connected to it, they tried Hydro Pumping again, just let them fall to their death. And unfortunately, it's going to leave Hedgy still alive here and almost taking the first stock of their own. So we're going to see if they can find a way to close this out. What happened? Did they run all oh, that? What if they ran out of Elwin? I don't, I don't really know, but I would like to attribute it to uh, that it was calculated. The, the Hydro Pump was all, <laughs> all he needed, all he was looking for, the aggression, the pressure. It's everything he needed, and he finally got it. Now, here's Hedgy. He needs to make something different. He makes to make waves right now. Remember that Levin Sword is an electric, an electric uh, weapon, and Greninja is super weak to this kind of uh, eff uh, elemental damage, so he needs to spam that. He needs to abuse it. As as much as possible so he is able to bring it back i mean that's assuming he doesn't have his special ability which uh you know he's able to change his uh his typings and whatnot you know yeah protein yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, that's definitely on the board here uh but we'll see what happens i mean right now greninja is definitely a good spot midnight is playing really really well uh that was potentially a really scary scenario follows up with the forward air oh jeez they they're ledge trap or edge guarding and ledge trapping have been pretty fantastic so far hedgy is definitely in a lot of trouble yeah and it's the, the low profile of greninja is working on a lot of things especially oh trying to get the spike unable to do so but the percentage the, i'm sorry the aggression keeps going and he's trying to get something aggressive and he finally gets it the down tilt into the forward air just really good that's something that you want to see a lot more and as i mentioned the low profile of greninja is definitely contributing to um hedgy missing those hellfires those confirms that he's so reliant on or at least he's so good at the fact that greninja moves so fast and he's so low to the ground it's making it ever so harder to get him and he almost gets the stock here yeah he's definitely going for some crazy cheese just keeping the pressure off stage just non-stop man hedgy is just having trouble keeping up uh okay down air just to try to get past the stage so he can recover a lot more safely but look at this man this damage is just non-stop the pressure is just unrelenting man midnight is absolutely killing it right there okay gonna be able to get the back throw putting him off stage trying to get something going oh ooh, okay arc thunder and there we go gonna be able to close out that stock Mm -hmm. Yeah, super effective. I'm telling you, electric type attacks are definitely working here. However, the percentage is quickly piling up, and the aggression is the determining factor into to seeing who is going to get it. I would, I, I'm loving the way that Midnight Buntai fan here is playing so aggressive with Greninja. I think it's a play style that it's absolutely required in this matchup, and he's taking the most advantage of. And gets the re, gets this beautiful extension there with the flyers into the up smash. Something that we haven't seen at least with this character so far with Greninja I'm, I'm trying to explain and it's just insane how he might be able to bring us back into a, maybe a game five situation in this set yeah honestly really really well played from Hedgy they actually tried going for that a little bit earlier to try and find a way to take the stock but we actually saw some pretty crazy DI from uh Midnight just actually popping out the entire opposite direction so we didn't see a follow-up for it but either way great stuff so far keeping it alive you know letting us all know that they are still in this set it, it's not quite over yet but um yeah who knows who knows gonna be getting to a game four situation I honestly wasn't expecting Hedgy to be able to turn that around but hey man they been they were able to make it happen yeah it's it's what i mentioned in the beginning a very volatile matchup because as you mentioned and, and i think it's an extremely important factor to uh keep track of the di uh, it's really it was really good on midnight avoiding those confirms however not only that it's really hard for Robin to confirm with these kind of strings because Greninja's very is fast faller. He's very short. He's very low profile down to the ground. So it's really hard to catch him. Now with the villager, we might see a lot of pockets and a lot of no you reverse uno cards situations. And I don't think that's something that a, a Hedgy might be too prepared. Hopefully he is. Oh, okay. Uh, we have to see how this villager plays out. I mean, this could be a real big problem, especially when that pocket comes into play. And not only just that, but villager can put down a lot of pressure. That forward air and back air are so disruptive. They're very quick moves, projectiles even then. And if you're able to do it like point blank, the hitbox on it uh, or the knockback is just absolutely incredible. You can close out some crazy stocks here. And man, I don't know what was going on with Midnight there. Just use pocket. I mean, you got a little bit of a vulnerability. 
Yeah, it's something that you really can't take uh, out of commission at any point because Hedgie is, Robin is going to capitalize on those situations. Uh, trying to get the bowling ball, but a masterful dodge. Aerial maneuvers there from uh, Hedgie. Beautiful uh, recovery there, avoiding lethal damage. What would have been a clean and confirmed kill. Really well done. Wow, another rapid jab, and it won't stop. I think the tree behind him was actually keeping the rapid jab going. Oh, no, tough spot. Wow, they're actually going to be able to get back to stage. Great high recovery, early recovery to be able to survive just a little bit longer. The balloon's actually going to stop that one arc fire. Jeez. Yeah, but even then, it was a, just a confirm into an L Thunder, into a Thoron. It's just so good. The way that uh, Hedgy uses every single one of his tools is just a tacti tactician's uh, best uh, tool, the brain. And it's something that he's working out just flawlessly. Listen, Skiff, I don't want to say I told you so, but I think the character swap from male to female is definitely working. I, I, a little bit. I'll, get, I'll give you a little bit, but this is... You. This is still random. This is still midnight to random. I'm not going to give it too much credit, but I'll give it a little bit of credit. You you have to believe in superstitions at some points, Kiv. Not everything is data. Not everything is hard uh, proof or... Uh, oh, I believe in the science. I believe in the science, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, sometimes you gotta believe, Skiff, and I think with this Game uh, 5 situation in the set, I think this is the perfect moment for everybody in chat to believe, because Gadji has been trying his hardest, he's going for the reverse 3-0, and now we got a matchup for the ages, Robin versus Duck Hunt, very, very obscure matchup. Yeah, you know, hey, I got to hand it to Midnight for actually just sticking with the uh, the random here. I don't know if they've got a Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt is such an, a weird, obscure character. It's got a lot of crazy stuff going on. I like to kind of refer to this character as the poor man snake. They kind of have that uh, a similar option with a frame one can. Uh, but we'll see if they're able to make it happen. I mean, Duck Hunt's got some crazy kill power, some incredible setups. It's just a matter of finding your way around Robin now. And again, Skiff, we don't have a lot of Japanese snake players. We do have a lot of duck hunts, and they're very prominent. So I I, I don't want to say I don't agree with you, with the poor man snake, but he's definitely someone that you need to take care of at all points because just like that, duck hunt might be able to bring it back, might be able to bring insane setups, and this is the perfect opportunity for us to either observe how a duck hunt is meant to be played or how, uh, or if Hedgy is going to confirm and solidify himself as the winner of this reverse trio. I mean, uh, there isn't just a Japanese um, uh, Duck Hunt players. I mean, they're actually going to be able to close out the stack right there. You could also attribute to uh, some Duck Hunt players such as Wisdom. Uh, there's, uh, right. there's Waka. Waka actually does play Duck Hunt outside of Luigi. And uh, who's another? Oh, uh, Zane. Zane's actually another fairly solid uh, Duck Hunt player. Uh, that's just all in the, within the North America. Uh, outside that, you have Japanese players for, for Snake. We do have Shogun. Uh, Shogun's actually really, really incredible. I uh, was actually able to go, I think, game five against... Uh, I forgot who it was. It was definitely a really good player at one of the Congo... I think, believe Congo Saga? But it is what it is. We're going to get back into this game here. And yeah, it's looking really dangerous for Midnight. Is they're not going to lose the stock quite yet. But ooh, they were going out for it. Yeah, he's definitely falling prey and victim to all of these frame traps, all of these setups that the tradition can put out, especially with that Levin sort perfectly positioned at all times. He was trying to go for a hard read earlier, trying to read a roll. Very smart. However, we've seen that those edge guards are what confirm the most and the most effective too, because he's just dealing massive amount of damage still on his first stock. Levin sort going with a yeet, going all the way down to get a little bit of extra credit, as you mentioned, and it's really good the way he's playing he's not gonna recover for that is he no he's um, not. no <laughs> yeah gonna be able to clean up that stock right there and uh, honestly i'm pretty surprised with how well that midnight just has been playing some of these characters i mean obviously he's not taking home the the w's on some of these but just making it happen oh my god almost gonna be able to just end the game right there not gonna be able to bring it to fruition though but continuing to pile on this damage is a hedgy and honestly it's looking like it might be reverse 3-0 and hedgy might be moving on to loser semis yeah, as I said, it's at least if you don't believe in, in magic, if you're a firm science believer, at least you got to believe in the in the mental shift that provides either switch in the character, the color, the the, the 
the, gen the gender, depending on which character it is. So it's, it's at least you got it to attribute it to that. And not only that, Hedgie's playing wonderfully. Every single action that he's doing is on point. Very worthy of Tactician. I would like to say, Skiff, that up air has been the MVP for Hedgie in this set and the previous one, because it's working flawlessly. Yeah, no, they've definitely had a couple falling up air.